Hi and welcome to what I hope will be the first in a series of podcasts about medical statistics. I hope that we'll be able to think about how to use medical statistics to answer the type of questions that clinicians ask and hopefully that you get some idea as to why you would choose to use a certain statistic or statistical test in a certain situation as opposed to just knowing how to crunch the numbers. Okay, so onwards into the first podcast then. We often use medical statistics to help us answer questions. And so in this podcast, we're going to think about how we formulate good clinical questions. Now, this might not feel like medical statistics, and in one sense it isn't, but it is important. If you're not asking the right type of questions, then it doesn't matter what fancy statistics or what fancy tests you do, you're not going to get very meaningful answers. So let's think about the type of questions that crop up in clinical practice. It could be about what the best choice of drug is, what might have caused a particular symptom in a patient, um, whether such and such a test is indicated or how you manage the, uh, the symptoms that your patient has presented with or whether the symptoms that your patient has presented with could be due to some treatment that you've given them. Or thinking in broader terms, uh, the questions we ask about are about findings, etiologies, differential diagnoses, what tests we do, what kind of prognoses our patients have, what treatments are available and how good they are. In a minute we'll think about an example which occurred to me uh, when I was in clinic, but it'd be good if uh, you can think of, of a question which has occurred to you uh, when you're on the ward recently or when you're in clinic. If you're into that kind of thing you could pause the podcast now and ponder it for a moment. Uh, if not, then we'll continue. So I remember one of the first urology clinics I ever um, went to. Um, it was when I didn't have a lot of experience in urology, so wasn't particularly familiar with um, uh, the management of a number of conditions. And so I was in, in clinic and um, I met an elderly gentleman, 86 years old, and he came to see me. Um, he's got a, a PSA of 134, which is markedly raised. And then when I when I do a, a PR exam, um, his prostate feels craggy and, and quite frankly malignant. Before he's seen me in clinic, he's had a bone scan, um, which hasn't showed any metastases. So I've got this gentleman in front of me. He's got clinically prostate cancer without any metastases. And uh, the question which presents it to me presents itself to me is, is it worth starting this chap on hormonal therapy for his prostate cancer? So that's my question, but it's not particularly well defined at the moment. Do I mean, is hormone therapy useful in treating locally advanced prostate cancer? Or am I more interested in whether elderly men with prostate cancer benefit from androgen deprivation therapy? Or do I really want to know, is hormonal therapy better than active surveillance in prostate cancer in the elderly? Or perhaps, does hormonal therapy give a survival benefit in non-metastatic prostate cancer in those aged over 85? Whilst I've got some idea as to what I'm asking, I haven't really defined my question particularly well. So what I want to talk about now is one way that we can turn these vague clinical questions into an answerable clinical question, and that's using the PICO format. It's not the only way of formulating a clinical question, but I think it's quite good, um, not least because it's uh, only four points and it's quite easy to remember. So P stands for your patient or the problem you're looking at. I is the intervention um, that is proposed. C, what's your comparison group? And O, what outcome are we measuring? So in my case, um, the patient group that I was really thinking about are those older than 80 with bone scan negative prostate cancer. The intervention that I was thinking about was androgen deprivation therapy. And what I was comparing it to was active surveillance. And then what I was interested in was how this affected on his survival. Um, is starting the androgen deprivation therapy now going to help them to live longer. So with those four um, aspects defined, I can go on to, um, to put my clinical question together. And it would look something like this. 
In a patient older than 80 with a PSA of greater than 100 and a malignant failing prostate but negative bone scan, what's the prognostic benefit of androgen deprivation therapy compared with active surveillance? Now, I'll grant you it's a bit wordy, um, but I hope you'll agree that this really nails down the question. If you thought up your own clinical question now, then you could spend a bit of time thinking about how you would use the PICO format um, to reformat your question into one of these answerable clinical questions. And this PICO format is not only useful when you're formulating your own cl clinical questions, but it can be quite useful when you're reading a paper um, to think about exactly what the paper is talking about, what population are they interested in and what intervention they're looking at compared with uh, what control and then what outcome they're measuring. So that's it for now. Um, I hope that today we've thought a little bit about different types of clinical questions that we ask and then how we can use the PICO format um, to formulate answerable clinical questions. Because if we aren't asking well-defined clinical questions, then no amount of medical statistics is going to help answer them.